Andre Iguodala is currently preparing to play in the gold medal game, but win or lose, he'll still come back wearing gold. Iguodala was part of a four-team blockbuster trade that sent him to the Denver Nuggets. Well, Jared and Wilkerson warmed up right here on Liga Financial Field just as they did last year. But this time, there were two big differences. One was the color of their jersey, and the others, they came out of opposite tunnels. Well, while everybody here in Philadelphia was sleeping, Paul Holmgren and the Philadelphia Flyers organization had a little trick up their sleeve. They sent Nashville defenseman Shea Weber a 14-year offer sheet, which is said to be worth, get this, more than $100 million. This game was all about the 3-0. Number 30 Bernard Pierce scored three touchdowns, and the offense committed zero turnovers in the Owls' 42-7 win over the Wildcats. With the statue in its new location here at the Art Museum, fans can take a picture of the Rocky statue right behind me. Johnny Miller with more information. How's it going, Johnny? Well, guys, it doesn't get much better than this. As you just heard, the rumors are rumors no more. Temple is back in the Big East, effective July 1st, 2012 for the football team and July 1st, 2013 for all sports. Temple will pay an exit fee of $6 million to the MAC and $1 million to the A-10, but the Big East has agreed to help out financially with those exit fees. Once word got out, the Temple will be making a return to the Big East Conference. Temple fans took to Twitter to show their excitement. At Christina Bean said, a bit late on this crazy work day, but so proud to be an Owl alum today. Hashtag Temple Big East. A few Owls will be waiting to hear their name called this weekend during the 2012 NFL Draft. But first, a breakfast for champions. Temple's annual Breakfast of Champions was held on Wednesday morning. The breakfast celebrated not how an athlete performed on the field or in the court, but how they performed off the field and in the classroom. The Owls are down here in the Midwest region playing their first game in the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee. South Florida beat Cal in the playing game to the number 12 seed and Temple's first opponent. If Temple advances to the next round, they'll take on the winner of the Michigan-Ohio matchup. Temple and South Florida tip off Friday night at 9.50 p.m. Be sure to watch the game on TNT. Go Owls! The Big East announced the 2012 football schedule, so let's take a look at what we can expect this fall for Temple football. The Owls open up the season with the fourth annual Mayor's Cup against Villanova on August 21st. Then they play host to Maryland on September 8th before traveling to Happy Valley to take on Penn State on September 22nd. And a matchup against the Explorers in front of a packed house. The two teams went back and forth exchanging baskets during the first 10 minutes of the game, but then the Owls went on a streak. Aaron Brown drains this tray to put Temple up 10. LaSalle's Earl Pettis was hot in this game, take control for the Explorers to keep them in it. With three minutes left in the game and the Owls back up by 10, Pettis single-handedly brought the Explorers back. Deadlocked at 71 and five seconds on the clock. The Owls had the ball, but were unable to get the shot off, so we're going to overtime. In the later game, we pick up the action in the third inning, scoreless with two outs and two on, when sophomore Stephanie Pasquale hit her team-leading seventh double of the year, knocking in two runs. The Owls scored two more runs in the sixth, and Capri Catalano recorded her second shutout of the year as Temple completes a sweep of Wagner with a 4-0 victory. And prior to that softball doubleheader, I got the chance to throw on my athletic gear and take the field with Brooklyn Wright herself, see how she prepares for game day. And now it's time for my play of the week. This week's top play comes from Temple shortstop Elijah Yarbrough as he tracks down this fly ball and flips over the wall. He holds on to the ball though and gets the out, and he also gets the top play of the week. You can also find that link on our Twitter by following us at TU underscore sports desk. And that's all I have for you this week. I'm Johnny Mayler, Lindsay and Derek, back to you. In week 16 of the 2011-2012 NFL schedule, the New York Jets traveled to Pennsylvania to take on the Philadelphia Eagles. Both teams needed the win in order to stay alive in a tight playoff race, but for two players it was much more than that. It was a homecoming and a reunion. Those players were former Temple football stars Jaquan Jarrett and Muhammad Wilkerson. Well, Jared and Wilkerson warmed up right here on Liga Financial Field just as they did last year. But this time there were two big differences. One was the color of their jersey, and the others they came out of opposite tunnels. They were used to playing side by side, but the former Owls enjoyed the experience of playing against each other on a field that they used to both call home. I've been playing with in a long time, and uh, just to go against uh, my former teammate, Jaquan Jarrett, it was pretty cool playing in there. Always great, you know, uh, me and Mo. Got a chance to talk before the game during while we warmed up. You know, uh, one of my best friends right there, y'all. In the talks leading up to the matchup, Jared assured to me that he and Wilkerson kept it clean. Nah, 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 no, no trash talk. You know, uh, it's all brotherly love. So uh, I asked him to ask Sanchez, can he throw me one? While the Eagles came away with the win, Jared noticed improvement in Wilkerson's game as well as his own as their rookie season was nearing the end. 
He's, he's improving each week. Week in, week out, he's getting better. He's out there making plays. You know, uh, I'm getting better. Every week, we all, we all getting better each week when we during practice or when we out there getting reps during the game. Reporting for Temple Update, I'm Johnny Mailer.